What's going on kids? Pastor Jacob here with another Life Group video. These past several weeks, we have explored the book of Judges. This week, we're switching to the book of Ruth. And the story of Ruth happens at the same time as all the stuff that was happening in the book of Judges. Or sometimes when Judges is going on, the story of Ruth happens. But instead of the doom and gloom and people not listening to Judges, we get to see a story of a family who trusts and obeys God, even in the tough times. We're going to be in Ruth chapter 1 and 2 today. Ruth comes after the book of Judges and before the book of 1 Samuel. So take a minute and find the book of Ruth. During the time of Judges, there was a horrible famine in the land. There was a family who moved to the land of Moab to find food. There was a woman named Naomi and her husband along with their two sons. Her two sons eventually married two Moabite women. Their names were Ruth and Orpah. After a number of years of living in Moab, Naomi's husband, and both of her sons died. That left just Naomi, Ruth, and Orpah. Naomi became so sad. She knew that there was no way for her and her daughter-in-laws to provide for themselves. So she gathered both of them up and she told them to go back to their hometowns so that they could remarry and have someone provide for them. After some persuading, Orpah decided that she was going to go back to her hometown. But Ruth was not happy. Ruth said to Naomi, Do not persuade me to leave you or go back and not follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Ruth was committed to Naomi and she was committed to God. She was going to go with Naomi wherever she went. Naomi realized that she was not going to be able to convince Ruth otherwise. So they set off back to Naomi's hometown. Bethlehem. When the people of Bethlehem saw Naomi and Ruth coming, there was a buzz across town. Naomi was back! Naomi was back! Everyone knew her and they were shocked and excited to see her. Naomi was not happy though. Life had been tough. She did end up changing her name to Mara, which meant bitter. When they got to Bethlehem, it was time for the harvest of barley. Ruth offered to go to the fields and to see if anyone would be willing to give them any food so they could eat. As she was gathering some of the grain behind some of the field workers, a man named Boaz saw her. Boaz went to Ruth and told her to gather what she needed and gave her food to eat. He was very kind to her. Ruth was able to take food back to Naomi thanks to Boaz's kindness. Next week, we're going to learn the rest of Ruth's story and how Boaz was more than just a kind man. The story of Ruth is one that should remind us to always trust God in tough times. Ruth and Naomi were in a tough situation, but God was looking out for them. He made sure that they had what they needed. God is looking out for us too. When our times are tough, we can remember the story of Ruth and that God is going to look after us. Now it's time to jump into our memory verse for the month. It's memory verse time. We have a new memory verse for the month of May. Our verse is in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians is in the New Testament. It comes after the book of Galatians and before the book of Philippians. We're going to be in chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Ephesians is a pretty small book, so take your time trying to find it. Take a minute and find Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Let's practice our new verse together. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. Great job! This verse is much longer and quite a bit tougher than our verse last month, so you're probably going to spend a little bit more time practicing this one and working on your emotions. We're not going to learn our emotions today. We'll get to that next week. But let's look at this verse, though, and see what it's teaching us. You should see this verse on your screen now. This is one of the most popular verses in the Bible, and it's a really important one for us to understand. This verse teaches us that we are not saved from our sins by anything that we do. God saves us from our sins when we put our faith in Jesus, and we trust that Jesus died for our sins 
in our place. Sometimes people think that they can be good enough to be saved, or sometimes people think that there's no way they could ever be good enough to be saved. These verses in Ephesians teach us that it is not about you and how good you are. We're saved by God's love and grace. When we trust in Jesus, that's enough to save us. Next week, we're going to dive into some emotions that go along with this verse. Now, let's jump into crack. It's craft time. Today, we're going to be using some dried oats, glue, markers, along with this Trust God printout that you can find on the church's website. I need you to take a minute and gather your supplies. And if you don't know what dried oats are, they're basically just oatmeal that you haven't cooked yet. Once you have your supplies, you're going to start by coloring in the words, trust God, kind of like I've started doing here. Then you're going to take your oats and you're going to glue them on the black lines that go around each of the letters. This craft, I know it's pretty simple and pretty easy, but this craft is to remind us and to think and look back on the story of Naomi and Ruth. God brought someone to provide for them with food and help take care of them. Even when all hope seemed gone, God was still there looking out for them. God's looking out for you too. And even when things look really tough, we can trust God to take care of us and provide for us. I've enjoyed going over this craft with you and exploring the story of Ruth, and I can't wait to get into the next part of it with you all next week. Till then, bye.